Hello, everybody. In this tutorial, we are going to use Abacus to perform a steady state stress analysis of a bar. So it's our first stress analysis uh, problem we're going to come across. And so this problem geometry is very similar to our hot bar problem. It's just instead of a heat transfer problem, we're going to do a stress. Save it. Like before, I'm going to make a part. So this will be very similar to the to, to the um, heat analysis uh, tutorial. So I can double click on parts or right click. It's going to be 2D. I'm going to call it bar. Deformable. This approximate size. Remember that just sets the background gate grid uh, for the sketching. Uh, it doesn't dictate the size of your part. So I can just click anywhere uh, or down here. I can type zero comma zero for the first point, and then the far point over here would be 10 comma one. I type down here, press enter or middle click. Uh, you can rescale at this point if you want. If I, you can see this box is still selected, so press escape to cancel that. And now I can middle click or press done to finish the sketch. And great, and we'll open up our bar like before, we'll make the mesh, or I can double click on the mesh there, or I can just go to the mesh module here. And we'll set our seeds, which is just setting the element size. And remember, seed is just an abacus term, and that's not what it's called in Ancestor Open Form. It's basically just setting the element size. Instead of one, let's make it a bit smaller, 0.2. So we'll have a few elements across the thickness. Click mesh, and yes, or middle click. So you can see we have five elements across the thickness. And uh, you can see here, I could have changed it to tri, um, um, which is triangular. There, it says it's going to delete the mesh, that's fine. And if I press mesh now, uh, that would make triangles. So I can have triangles or uh, quads, uh, either is fine. Uh, if I look at the element type, the default should be fine, which is plain stress. So if you have the 2D uh, stress analysis problem, it can represent something very thin like a plate or something very thick like a dam. So plain stress means it's, it's thin, the stress is zero on the out of plane direction. And so that's fine, that's our mesh done. Let's make our material. So we'll say steel again, and instead of giving the thermal properties for our equation now for a steady state and um, elastic analysis, we just need two parameters to define Hooke's law. So the Young's modulus and the Poisson's ratio, so 200 gigapascals and 0.3 is uh, dimension as Poisson's ratio. Now we need to assign the material properties to our part. So to do that, we make a section, which we're gonna call steel section. Select the steel part, click OK. Now we're going to assign it to the part. Uh, so we can either do that up here or we can uh, just go to the part section assignment, double click, select this part, and we'll create a set called all as well. Press done. And select the steel section, click OK. Now that's our material assigned. And um, now we go to add our part to the assembly, make an instance of it. So remember that it's only, uh, the analysis is only performed on the instances. So if you have 10 different parts drawn, you only add one to the instance, which are, it's only the part in the, the instance, um, um, instances that are actually analyzed. So if I did it once, be careful of adding it multiple times. I'm gonna create a step. Static general is static. By static, they mean uh, steady state. So uh, steady state and then uh, general is just the, the default implicit solver in open form or in abacus. And we'll talk a little bit about what implicit and explicit means later. So I'm going to accept the default settings. Time period doesn't matter um, because it's steady state. Next, we're going to go down and specify the boundary conditions. In this case, it's going to be very similar to the uh, heat transfer steady state bar. So in that case, we were solving for temperature and we specified zero temperature on the left and we specified a heat flux on the right. Whereas um, the analogy here for stress analysis, we specified zero displacement on the left, we're solving for displacement and a flux of displacement, which is basically force or pressure on the right. So I go BCs and remember loads and BCs are both just boundary conditions.
I'm specific to abacus again. So you can see it just says u1 equals u2 equals u3 equals ur1 equals ur2 equals ur3. So u1 is displacement in the x direction. Here's the x. u2 is y. u3 is z, which isn't at play in, the, in this um, model. And then ur1 is rotation around the x, y, and z. So that's actually not at play either. Uh, rotations, you can't fix rotations like this um, for these solid elements. Uh, that's only for special uh, shell elements and beam elements. So that's it fixed. Uh, then we'll go load and we're going to pick up pressure. So we're just going to go up and call this right pressure. And um, we're going to select over here and we're going to call it right as well. It's going to create a surface for us, just like in the heat analysis problem. And we're going to apply a pressure of one e to the six. So pressure by default positive means pushing in on a surface. So one e to six will be pushing in, but I want to pull out. So I'm going to apply a minus pressure, which is like a tension pulling out. So you can see now that's all set up. Great. And um, we're ready to run the model now. So we're going to create a job, double click on job. And um, I never gave my model a name. So let's let's rename our model uh, to bar. Let's save it as well. And make a job. We'll call the job bar as well. Up the defaults and submit it. And it says it's submitted. Let's check monitor. Later on, we're going to see how uh, you don't have to run the model on your computer. You can actually uh, write the input file. And that input file contains everything about the model ready to run. So you can transfer that to the supercomputer and uh, you can run it there and then copy the results back. Okay, so I did one step. The time increment size was one. We got to the end one and was successful in that. And everything else is fine. So we go right click, results. And I click this little colorly plot formed um, symbols. Um, so in a stress analysis problem, there's far more fields to look at than in a heat transfer problem. So if you click on this little picture here, um, you can see all the different fields. So maybe we'll look at displacement first. So the magnitude is displacement. So displacement is a vector. So you can look at the x component or the y component or the magnitude. So if I look at the magnitude, you can see, well, it's moved by the most over here. And then it's 0 on the left, because I said the displacement had to be 0. Um, um, you can look at the x component. Look at the Y component as well. So the Y component will tend to contract a little bit. And we can look at the stresses as well. So I can look at the stress, the XX stress. And I can look at the YY stress. So all these stresses look a little bit strange because of these triangle elements and they're quite coarse and that they, they, they're giving kind of strange jagged results. Uh, but basically the stress is, is should be around constant at um, 1 to the 6 that we applied for the x direction. So over here should be around 1 to 6. Great. And the last thing to do here is I'm just going to plot along a line like we did in the heat transfer problem. So let me see. OK, we still have the path from the heat transfer problem. But if you don't, um, you can double click, go points, and then add in the coordinates. So maybe I'll just do it again here. So path 2, I'll go 0. And 0 0.50 for the first point, and then 10, 0 0.50 for the second point. So that's going to go from there to there. And just looking at this, the bar is originally 10 long. You can see it's much longer now. So maybe you should comment on that. So by default, um, Abacus in the stress analysis problem will deform the geometry by the displacement, but it will scale it so you can see it. So if I click here versus here, you can see the bar is getting uh, longer. But this is a steel bar, so it didn't really change its length by 20%. So if I click on this option here, which we call common options, you'll see something called the deformation scale factor, which is at 20,000. So if I set that to one, press apply, then it shows the true deformation. So this is the, the true deformation. Let me turn on the displacement. So you can see the bar barely moves because the displacement is tiny. So it's uh, 50 microns over a 10 meter bar. So it's just Abacus has this auto compute uh, for the scale factor, just where it multiplies the deformation by this uh, scaling factor, just so you can see it. So you can see what type of deformation is occurring. 
So just be careful, that's not the real deformation. You have to set the uh, scale factor to one to see the true deformation. Um, so I'm going to set that scale factor to one. Um, and now I'm going to go um, X, Y, data, double click, path, and use path two. So I have the option here to plot on the deform shape or the on deform. So I'm going to use the on deform because I know the on deform bar is 10 meters long, whereas the deformed one is a little bit longer than that. So I'll use the deformed one, include intersections, and uh, plot the magnitude displacement. Pretty similar to the temperature distribution, it's zero at one end and non zero with a linear distribution. So I can save that and just say U versus dist. Um, so I have my plot here. And you can see I have my temperatures from before. So if I double click on U versus this, and I can right click edit, I can click in the first box, scroll down, and then shift click in the next column, the bottom box, and right click and copy to put it into Excel for making a plot. Um, so that's the end of this uh, tutorial.